So welcome to this wonderful project, Big O, Big Omega, and Big Theta by group A18. J, James, Chris, and Chris. And start it off with the Big O notation. We have two functions, f and g. We say that f of x is Big O of g of x. There are constants c and k such that the absolute value of f of x is less than or equal to c times the absolute value of g of x when x is greater than k. So this whole sentence is read as f of x is big O g of x. So what does this all mean? It means that when you multiply, or f of x grows slower than a fixed multiple of g of x. So we can represent this pretty easily on a graph. So let's say that you have function g of x equals x squared and the function f of x equals x. So in this case, we'll have our c is equal to 1 and our k is equal to 2. So what does this all mean? It means when you multiply function g of x times constant c, whenever x is greater than our k value, so whenever x is greater than 2, the function g of x is going to grow faster than the function f of x. So g of x is kind of the upper bound for the function f of x. So there's a whole, uh, a whole different ordering for a bunch of different functions graphically. You know, you start out with constants. You have, say, 1, and then the next, like, function you have is going to be log n, we'll have n, we'll have n times log n, and then we'll have n factorial all the way up there, we have n squared, and to the n. So now what do all these lines mean? These functions have a different order than each other. As the graph goes up, the order increases. So a function that grows faster has a higher order. So say we take this arbitrary point. You can say that when we're greater than this point, we'll just call it point A. So whenever x is greater than A, a function n factorial will grow faster than 2 to the n. So in that case you can say that n factorial is the upper bound. So let's move on to a mathematical example. We have f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1 is big O of x squared. So you know we have our we have our constants c and k, so c equals 4 and k equals 1. So whenever we have, uh, we have, whenever we have these two functions, and x is greater than our k equals 1, our function, f, our function 4x squared is going to grow faster than the function x squared plus 2x plus 1. So f of x is big O of x squared when we have the witnesses, which are what these constants are called, c equals 4 and k equals 1. Let's move on to big omega. Big omega is the opposite of big O. It gives a lower bound in terms of g of x for the function f of x. So the absolute value of f of x is greater than or equal to a constant c times the absolute value of g of x. This is read as f of x is big omega of g of x f of x is big omega of g of x if and only if g of x is big O of f of x. This is intuitive because if one's the upper bound of the other, then the other one's going to be the lower bound of that one. Let's move on to our mathematical example. Of x cubed plus 5x squared plus 7 is big omega g of x, where g of x is x cubed. So in this case, we have our constant c equals 8. So, you know, you multiply g of x times 8, so you have 8x cubed, but that's not going to be as big as f of x because on this side of the equation you also have 8x cubed plus whatever, 
5x squared plus 7 is going to equal, so obviously that's going to grow quicker. So then we can do a graphical example for big omega. So in this case, we'll have function f of x equals x, and the function g of x equals the square root of x. So again, you're going to have you're going to have uh, c equals one for multiplying against g of x. And you can clearly tell that we'll have k equals two because when they're one, they're the same, so graphs probably should be closer together. Oops, kind of correct this. Um, geez. Uh, but so you can clearly see that f of x grows faster than g of x. Move on from that little nightmare. So we have big theta. So we have constant 1 times the absolute value of g of x is less than or equal to f of x, which is less than or equal to a different constant times that same absolute value of g of x. So there's both an upper and lower bound. f of x is both big O of g of x and big omega of g of x. So in this case, you can say that g of x and f of x have the same order. Move on to our mathematical example. You have 3x squared plus 8x log x is big theta of x squared. Because 8x of log x is less than 8x squared, then you can just think to you know think about that for your c value so you have 3x squared plus 8x log x is going to be less than 11x squared now why we have 11x squared well you're going to want to have at least 3x squared because you are, you have to match that and then because you know 8x squared is bigger than 8x log x your c value becomes 11 so whenever x is greater than 1 you know that it's going to grow faster than 3x squared plus 8x times log of x. So uh, on the converse side, well, probably step back for a second. This whole thing is big omega. So uh, whenever you, know, you have the 3x squared plus 8x log x, you know that's going to be big O of x squared because it's you have 3x squared, so the constant's already bigger, plus 8x times the log of x, so that's already just going to be more positive. So in this case, you know that uh, 3x squared plus 8x log x is big, big theta of x squared. So what would this look like on a graph? So we're going to have a function f of x go with the square root function again and then we're going to have our c1 g of x and g of x is also equal to square root function and we'll have c2 times g of x so in this case we'll have c1 equals one half and c2 equals two so this makes it so that you have one half times your g of x function, and then you're going to have uh, two times your c2 g of x function. So you can clearly see that this function is going to be double whatever f of x is, and c1 times g of x is going to be half of whatever f of x is. So there you have... Uh, g of x, or f of x, is big theta of g of x. And these functions, f of x and g of x, have the same order, which is a little bit obvious because they're the same function in this case, but even if they weren't, they'd still have the same order in big theta. And that's about all we have.